Hi, in the previous video, I talked about how to read mathematics and my final suggestion uh, was writing a summary for yourself. In the years of me doing mathematics, I learned that I write differently when I write things to myself <laughs> or when I write things uh, for, for another person. It's also different when I write for students or when I write to my, uh, let's say I'm writing, I'm writing an article uh, for, my, uh, for my fellow mathematicians, right? So the first thing you need to remember when you write, math write mathematics or write anything really is who is your audience? If you're here studying mathematics, mainly your audience is the person who is going to grade your work. And understanding um, who your audience is will help you to... Uh, to write in a way that is um, suitable for your audience. So let me just for the, for the sake of the video, um, in the mind that you will be mainly writing for uh, your lecture or whoever is grading your work, um, I'm going to give some uh, tips on what you should uh, do when you write in an assignment or in a test or in an exam. Sometimes at the end of an exam or a test and when the paper is handed back and um, students will uh, see their results and then they're not happy. They're not happy with, um, with my marking, for instance. And uh, most of the time it is caused by their writing, not writing uh, things clearly. Uh, we will look at it in a little later. What do I mean by not writing things clearly? But anyway, um, they will say things that... Uh, um, why do I lose marks here? And I will say, for instance, oh, I, I'm not, it's, it's not entirely clear to me what the reasoning that you use here. And they will say things like, well, it's, it should be obvious, right? Uh, they will say sometimes things like, you're, you're the lecturer, you should know, right, that this is obvious. But the uh, students tend to forget that when they're writing an exam or they're writing a test, it is an opportunity for them to uh, demonstrate their understanding. Right? So when you write something, be as clear as you can um, because that's very helpful for the reader, um, which is the lecturer in this case, um, to see whether you understand the content or not. So don't make it difficult to your lecturers, please, and uh, try to um, understand that the responsibility of communicating what you know lies with you. I have here some advice from the book on how to write uh, mathematics. I'll go through them one by one. And again, like in the previous video, I will demonstrate with an example. Okay, first advice, write in sentences. It is a common mistake to believe that mathematics should only be written in symbols. This is not true. Imagine if you read a textbook and there are no words there. It's just uh, symbols. I don't think anyone will understand, right? Uh, we, symbols can be useful and convenient when you want to shorthand something, right? But um, when, we, uh, are, we're, when we're writing, we're actually communicating and we're, we're, when we're communicating, we're using a language, right? So you should write in sentences, like you're writing a letter to somebody, right? You should have uh, connecting phrases, you should use punctuation and treat your mathematical objects as part of a sentence. Okay, uh, second advice here, make it clear to the readers. So you should make it clear to the readers your intention when you write something, right? State what you're about to do. We shall prove that, something, 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 right? So that the reader is informed on what you are uh, going to do next. I sometimes tell students that um, when they are, when their writing is not so clear, I said that I can, I cannot read your mind. I can only read what you wrote. So it is very important to make it clear to the readers because, well, I'm not psychic, right? <laughs> the reader's not psychic. So explain uh, what you're doing, keep the readers informed. And also it is good to always explain uh, an assertion. So what happened from this step uh, to the next step, maybe you're using a theorem uh, or whatever reasoning, do write it down so that it's easier to follow. It is important to uh, also write things explicitly. Avoid 
overuse of the word it. Also things like above. Um, I read a text one time and then somebody say from the definition above and it's not directly above the text that I'm reading but uh, several pages before. That's not above, right? Um, so we use labels um, if, if necessary. Sometimes we label equations so that when you're referring back to it, it's easier for the readers to navigate. So do uh, write the things explicitly um, rather than say it, say what it is. Say uh, the function rather than saying it is continuous, say the function is continuous, um, things like that. And finally, very important, proof, read your work. We are humans, we make mistakes, so it is very important for you to proofread your work. One other important thing uh, about proofreading is that sometimes it's, um, it's helpful to take a break before you proofread your work. Because when you're so immersed in your work, you stop seeing um, what you wrote and instead you see what you want to see, what your mind wants to see. Uh, it's good probably just leave the work for a bit, go get a cup of coffee or just go for a walk real quick and then come back and, uh, and start reading uh, your work and, and um, maybe you, you will see, um, you will spot um, typos or whatever and from then on you can, you can do some, some improvements. All right, so having said all of those, I want to try and demonstrate what I mean um, with an example. Okay, let's look at this proof written by a fictional student that I just made up. <laughs> um, okay, so this proof actually has the correct component, has all the correct strategy. We know um, uh, how the proof of triangle in a colleague goes. He used the fact that the absolute value squared is, named, uh, is the same as uh, the number itself squared. You expand the square, you use the fact that a number is always less than or equal to its absolute value for that middle term. And then you use the same idea here again as in the beginning. And then the last part is just, uh, is just algebra. And then um, you take the square root, so to say, and then get into uh, this part here. Okay, so lots to unpack here. Um, the components are correct, but there are some reasonings that are missing, right? Also some, well, lots of arrows going here and there. Also uh, some incorrect symbols. Okay, so uh, let's just zoom in to the last part for now, right? So it says here that from all of this, right? It means that um, it's basically, basically can, be, uh, can be written or like contracted into this statement here. Right? That absolute value x plus y squared less than or equal to absolute value of x plus absolute value of y squared. And student wrote equal um, this statement, which is the same statement uh, without the square. Okay, so I think the, the one way to interpret this is, okay, the person who wrote this meant to say that um, this has the same meaning or rather um, having this is the same as having this because x and y here are non-negative. Okay, so it is using the result that for x, uh, for uh, two non-negative, um, let's say a and b, let me just write it here, a and, if a and b are non-negative, then if you have a squared uh, for this, if a squared is less than b squared, then a is less than b which is true for non-negative numbers. This is what, uh, what it's trying to do here, right? But the, the, the equal sign here is not correct, right? Because this statement does not equal to that statement. This statement actually implies that statement, right? So that symbol is not correct. Um, also, when you read a novel, for instance, or a book, you read, read line by line, right? So when you read something like this, x squared, plus 2xy plus y squared, next line says x less than or equal to absolute value of x, and then less than or equal to, oh, what, what does it mean, right? And also, um, here, it says x, but what about y? This reasoning is true if you say that this property is true for all x, right? Suppose this is uh, the reasoning for that inequality sign, right? Uh, but it is, it is not clear, right? It doesn't, it doesn't have quantification here. It doesn't say that this is true for any uh, x uh, 
um, any real number, number x. Okay, so there are lots of things that we can improve here. So the components of the proof is correct, right? Um, and the writing can be improved. Okay, my first year lecturer used to say that if he sees a solution uh, like this, he assumed that this is your uh, this is your scratch paper, right? This is your rough work. This is not the final proof. Okay, so we can improve this. Let's see how we can improve this. Okay, let's see uh, what we have here. So um, the proof starts um, repeating the assumption. This is fine. Um, Actually, it's very good. Sometimes people don't do this, but it's always nice to uh, restate the assumption to know what we have. We start with two real numbers, x and y, and the authors state uh, their intention of what they're going to do first, right? They're going to pr first prove, they have this, you have this intermediate step, as we saw before, is to prove um, a similar inequality, but with squares, right? We first prove this inequality. And the rest is written in a very similar manner as the previous page, but now the reasoning is written for every step in brackets after, um, just before that step is applied. Um, excuse me, yeah, just before, just after the step is applied. So you, you should read this as follows. This is equal to that because or since, right? Um, and equal uh, to this, basic algebra, less than or equal to this. And this is where, where um, this fact is used, that any number is less than or equal to um, uh, its absolute value, or actually I, we can also improve uh, this, right? If you want to improve this, you can also maybe, you feel that uh, the word since has, has been overused at this point, you can use as or because or whatever you like. Okay, so one way to improve this. All right, once, um, so, so there's a bit of things that can be improved here, missing punctuation. Okay, <laughs> so this is not perfect. We can still improve it, but it's a little bit better than before. All right, so this whole step shows that we have, uh, that inequality is proven. And then um, the next uh, sentence says that for all a and b in R with a and b no negative, we have this implication. Therefore, this, which is what is proven before, implies that, uh, uh, that right? Essentially, um, applying this uh, result for a equals this and b equals this. And um, the author even wrote, since um, these guys are non-negative. Again, can be improved. We use since too many times. Let's say because. Oops, because. Again, improving. Okay, uh, and this completes the proof. Okay, let's also uh, put a QED symbol there to um, uh, make it a little nicer. Okay, I hope uh, I made my points clear. Let me repeat it again. Write in sentences, make it clear to the readers, write explicitly, put quantifiers when necessary, and proofread your work. Okay, so I hope um, this has been beneficial for you. And in the next video, we're going to start with uh, the main part of the series, namely to write uh, proofs. Okay, I will see you in the next video. Thank you for listening.